structural element to maybe uh, define all three menus so that you can, first of all, um, cover a very rectangular natatorium, but also a very um, round shaped um, multifunctional hole. But we try to find a same metaphor to do it. So they feel like a family, so they don't compete against each other. They, they, they are kind of a, a, a family thing. So <coughs> therefore we, 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 we discovered this kind of, let's say, like maritime sails, which, which a little bit look like, like bridges, and we covered, first of all, the natatorium, the multifunctional hall, and the amphi um, theater with this topic, with this structural topic. And so the task for us as a structural engineer was to find out how, how can we give this a structural system or a principle which you can transport from one to the other building. And to be honest, uh, it was quite tricky during that days because the construction time, also the planning time, was very short. Normally, uh, we, uh, we like as structural engineers going for efficient structures. And there are two principles. There's the principle of tension, which you know all from a cable which is hanging, yeah? and when you flip that around, you have, you have the arch, and this is on the pure compression of this law. And when you're in the middle, when you are in bending, then you could normally create bulky structures, but they're easy to construct and easy to build very quick. Yeah? And when you do cable structures, you have to do very careful work in planning and in execution, and the special, special situation in SOSC, or the Shanghai Oriental Sports Center, was that we had no time at all. And so we really, just, <coughs> we really decided not to go for something like you see so in Haiku, where you have huge tension forces which you have to control, which you have to think about, which you have to transport. So we said, okay, we have to find something which is fulfilling the form and uh, fitting to the structure. Uh, to to so first, let's talk a bit about the next, about the natatorium. So, the natatorium, Yeah, very, very, very um, short explanation. Um, also has a dining area and the pool area, it has a, the warming up area, and we have later on this fun area. And all these um, uh, different, um, uh, the swimming um, facilities are under one big roof and for us it was very important not only to have it with the daylight but we also wanted to create an arcade which uh, is um, embracing the stadium to have also shadow and to once the people really approach to the stadium they also go under this um, arcades and that is what, what I said that of course, a TV, once it's very official, you can close all windows, so you have a dark room, but in the normal use, it's very, I think, very good for the psychology to have this daylighted swimming setting. And also here, you feel the structure which you recognize from outside, you feel it also from the inside, which I think is very important. So it was very easy when you were looking to the, to the general section of the building, we have the stands on both sides. We want to create that special outside area, this arcade where people should walk. The facade was placed here, and the stand was there, so the entire length was, I think, 200 meters to 20. And the stand was between 86 and 95 meters. This was due to the fact that uh, he couldn't explain later. And we decided to use an arch system, yeah, because this is the most easy thing pure compression, so this for us was the most light thing. What is the, what is the problem with an arch with getting heavy loads? This arch can buckle on, in its plane or it can uh, buckle from its plane, yeah? but due to the fact that uh, the, the idea was not creating a, a kind of two-dimensional form, it was more the idea to create a three-dimensional shape in cross-section, we added a really light uh, truss on top of it, two trusses inclined and were connected, and these trusses were stabilizing the main arm. So the, the main load is carried by that little uh, pipe at the, at the bottom, and they have, all the other things are stabilized by that, or well, this is stabilized by the truss. 
This is, this is the structural model of it. And you would say, when you talk about a triangle, it's always falling over from one or to the other side. So, but when you lean them against each other, they help each other. So they create triangles again and, and forming a stable system. But due to the fact we were not leaning against each other like this, yeah, so we're standing apart, apart so we had to fix each other by <laughs> my arms. <yeah. laughs> and so we have horizontal members, perlins, which are like a stick fiddling through that primary forms. And this is the structure, how it's, it's drawn, how it was built later on. And this is the, this is the main detail of that building. It's really simple. That's, that's the arch. It's a tube only 600 millimeter, like this, spanning this 96 meter, and supported here. And the truss is riding on top of much smaller tubes but it's as simple as, as that. This is the structure on site. Here you see that that guy is carrying loads. All the other are more or less stabilizing that single member, transferring the loads via concrete block to the ground, bringing it to the other side, and short circuit this with the other mover on the other side. That's a funny story you want yes, to tell? Yeah, yeah, it's a, not a really funny story. So you remember that we didn't have much time and uh, everything was under pressure. And uh, there was a big meeting on the site and the mayor comes. And you know, the mayor comes, the client very nervous. <coughs> and then he saw this tree, this dingo tree. And the client said this tree had to disappear because there's no place for the stadium and knowing that we don't have time the mayor said no the tree has to be saved and you have to change the design and that is um, I think the reality of being an architect that everything somehow is possible and that is the reason uh, normally um, I, I never would um, be um, come to the idea to, to have this curved line. But since the tree was here, we then tried to actually um, bend the huge facade. And we also were talking to, to Sven if this is possible. He said yes, it is much more complicated because every beam then is a little bit different. But at the end, I think that this light curve but helps a lot from the appearance. So again, because um, you, you had to solve the problem, solving the problem, something genius comes out. So don't be afraid once you face a problem. Maybe the problem will give you even more challenge and uh, the design even looks better. And so what was the tricky thing with that? Having an arch, having a steel structure, which is looking beautiful in the eyes of, a, of an engineer, somehow you have to clad it. And the, the, the main problem was how to clad that. And as Nico mentioned, every, each and every arch was different, or there were, no, there were mirrors in the middle, so we have two, diff, two, two arches which, which are the same. But we set up a model which, is, which was defined by pretty easy uh, forms like like a, like a sphere, like a torus, and all the all the outer outer surface was cut out from such principal forms. And depending on the span and the size of the arc of these of these steel structures, we could quite easily uh, gain the information for the shape of the outer surface from that parametric model. This was quite helpful. And so you see here these different shapes. And these are all cut from in, in the same principle, but from different diameter sphere, from different diameter of torus, but really easy to construct because it would give really, really simple information to the construction company. And here you can see there's an offset of the cladding, which was allowing us to. to uh, keep the, the tolerances of the steel structure and the facade structure. These were the mock-ups we did on site. We could pretty much think about the, the lines because these lines, which are then in the curvature, visually define also 
when you when you come to the building, they define the shape as well. So how you arrange such lights will pretty much affect your view on the building and giving you the feeling: is this a real curve or is it just a polygonal or whatever? And so we worked a lot on these shapes. This is how it is finally done. You can see it's kind of from the bottom; it's kind of dynamically spreading out, yeah. And this gives the feeling that there is a really strong and dynamic form. Okay, the, the um, main um, multifunctional stadium also quite huge. It has a diameter of 130 meters. And it also is used for, um, first of all, swimming, of course, but later on it is also used for um, other reasons. So here we have again 10 kind of skeleton bones which are somehow building the bridges to, to um, solve, um, let's say, the geometrical um, function for the stadium. And that is uh, uh, the way how, how people approach to the stadium. And as you already can see here, this is a, the inside of the building, so the stands are much higher than we have this in the natatorium. And so we have to find this, having the same form in mind for the building, but we have to find a solution how we lift up that roof. Here you can see that, you see the section, you see that the main stand is 150 meters, this was uh, 28 meters below the, the video cube, we had let's say 15 meters, and so we decided not to have an arch, so we, we decided to have a, a frame structure wrapping around with two hinges at the bottom, they created the, the largest standing moment at the edge, and the lowest, the lowest one here, yeah, you can even, if you would do a hinge here, it would be even zero. And so we make slender down the structure here in order to increase the, the bending moment at the edges because this was the location <coughs> where we could add most of the structural height and material in order to show, or in order to emphasize as well the form uh, GMP had in mind. This was during the construction. This was the middle arch of this 150 meter span. So here we have four and a half meter. At the outer edges, we have nearly 18 meter in structural height. And uh, this was a quite uh, challenging task, on, really on site, because I think they had a construction time of only two months in order to build up that system. Incredible. Yeah, and, and the, the last was this kind of um, fee diving theatre. So um, again, here we try to find the same method, but different to to build this um, round um, fee, um by this um, by this same structural element. And uh, I think this stadium really um, I love it because it's first of all very much oriented to the water, and it has a very light and open gesture, so people um, also from the water can see the stadium, but when you are sitting inside, you also enjoy the view to the, first of all, Hangzhou, the Hangzhou River, and um, it is a very light, also very South Chinese um, atmosphere sitting there. And as Nico already mentioned, it has a little bit the image of the Haiku Stadium, but it's made from from, not from a cable system, it's made from solid steel elements. And we, as you could imagine, this was the frame we used in the gymnasium. Yeah? So we cut it into, into pieces, and these two pieces then can be leveled out, and we place them next to each other, like we are friends, like this, yeah? holding each other in a circle, stabilizing each other, but as you all know, sometimes it's a hard discussion to convince our authorities. Normally these guys help each other because at the outer edge, even though it's not a cable system, we create a compression ring, and at the inner edge, we create a tension ring as well. But the authorities did not believe in that. So uh, we, already, we at the very beginning had the idea, oh, we only need one really tiny leg and can deliver out and then we fix it to the neighbor. Yeah? But they said, okay, well, maybe there's one missing at the end. We don't know if there's somebody destroying that. And so 
each single form has to stand out as a cantilever, and so we have to widen our legs and doing the cantilever like that. And we are had to brace. You have seen the bracings. We had to brace each and every form to get uh, with the next form. And this was a bit of pity in the discussion. You see that they are quite slender, these bracings, but they are useless. And useless material is something you don't like. We don't like the construction. <laughs> and you can see how it works. And uh, yeah, it's very nice. And also the platform. So when you're here, the very nice platform, we had a very nice party there one night. And here's this nice view to the river. Very good. Yeah. Stadiums we like very much because it's a uh, large buildings. You, you work with voids, but you work also with space. And um, therefore, the future stadium also a result of the competition was a very good um, way of defining spaces. And being in Suzhou, um, of course, you know it better than me, but I always go there for the Suzhou garden tradition. That um, they really have this, I think, 12 beautiful gardens inside the town. And they're very compact, very condensed, but uh, they're very clever arranged. And we learn from these gardens how to embed these three stadiums and a uh, kind of retail area with a hotel. And we wanted also <laughs> to have these stadiums being the Sujo stadiums in a, in, a, in a, let's say, park for the public. That was um, the idea we had. So, um, so you know these these very condensed um, gardens, and here you see our um, concept that we embedded them. They have huge podiums. On the podiums, you have all the exercise areas. Inside the podium, you have all the 